Hi, this is Kavita Suresh Kumar and I am going to demonstrate how IBM WebSphere application server network deployment Docker image can be built and different containers for deployment manager, nodes and application server can be created and configured to form a cell topology. Also, I am going to demonstrate how to configure and run the data header sample in that cell topology. Let us start the demo by reviewing the docker file. This is a docker file based on which we are going to build the image. We are going to use Ubuntu 14.04 as the base image and will be installing the unzip and wget and then the installation manager will be installed and then the websphere application server version 8.5.5 will be installed. Over that fixpack 5 will be installed and these are the ports exposed on the container. Let us build the docker image. Docker build minus t nd dot. nd is the name of the image and dot indicates the current directory where the docker file is placed. The build is in progress. Installation of installation manager has started. IBM installation manager has been successfully installed under slash opt slash IBM slash installation manager slash Eclipse and the IBM WebSphere application server version 8.5.5 installation is in progress. IBM WebSphere application server version 8.5.5 has been successfully installed under slash opt slash IBM slash WebSphere slash app server directory and the installation of fixpack 5 over that is in progress. Application of Fixpack 5 over version 8.5.5 is successful and then now the ports which are required to access the application server are getting exposed. WebSphere Docker image has been built successfully. Issue Docker images command to review the images. The Docker images command displays the image information. Here we have used wget to download the images from an FTP server and then perform the installation. Hence the image size is 4.406 GB. Let us start a container for running the dmanager profile. docker run is the command to start the container to which we are passing various parameters. The name parameter specifies the name of the container. Minus D specifies the container is running in a detached or background mode. Minus P with the associated port number indicates the port number associations between the port in the host machine and the container ports. And minus V the option it indicates like a volume in the host machine is mounted to a volume on the container. Minus T N D indicates the name of the image and the slash bin slash bash is the command. Container has been successfully started. Let us inspect the IP address of the container. The IP address of the container, let us create a deployment manager profile. Deployment manager profile is successfully created. Let us start the deployment manager. Deployment manager is started successfully. Let us try to access the deployment manager through the admin console. Here we are going to access the admin console using the host IP address and the port number 9060 which is associated with the container port number 9060. Click login button to login to the admin console. So version 8.5.5.5 is successfully installed. Let's check the node information. We have node 01. Now let us start a container to create a node profile. The container has been successfully started. Let's inspect the IP address of the node container. Let's create a custom node profile on the node container and federate that to the deployment manager. The custom node profile has been successfully created. Let us review in the admin console. Node 02 has been successfully created and federated to the deployment manager. Let us create a new server container for running the app server profile. The prof Container has been successfully created. 
inspect the IP address of the server container. Let us create an application server profile using the IP address obtained from the container. Application server profile has been created successfully. Let us federate this node to the deployment manager. The federation is in progress. Node 03 has been successfully federated. Give docker ps-a command to review the containers. So we have the server container, node container and the dmgr container. Let us review in the admin console the successful federation of the node 03. We are going to configure and deploy the Dratada sample. For that, first click Security, Global Security and then Java Authentication and Authorization Service and click the J2C Authentication Data. Uncheck the prefix New Alias and then click Apply. Click Save to save the changes. Click the J2C Authentication Data and then click New. Enter the alias name, Trade Data Data Source of Data, User ID db 2 nst one Enter the password. Click OK and click Save to save the changes. Click New to create another alias. Give Trade Admin Auth Data User ID db 2 nst one Password db 2 nst one Click OK. Click Save to save the changes. So we have created two authentication alias. Let's create a resource. Resources JDBC provider. We are going to create the JDBC provider in the cell scope. Click new. Select the database type as DB2. Provider type as DB2 universal JDBC driver provider. And implementation type connection pool data source. Then click next and provide the directory location where db2 jcc jars are available this is where actually the jar files are available in the host machine we have mounted that to the container we have successfully created the jdbc provider so let us create a data source click data source data source also we are going to create in the cell scope click new enter the data source name that is a trade data source Provide the JNDA name. Click next. Select an existing JDBC provider. Select the provider which we have created. Click next. Enter the database name and the server name which is the IP address of the host machine where DB2 server is running. Click next. Select the component manage authentication alias and then click finish. Save the changes. Click new to create another data source. This is a no data, no transaction data source. Click next. Select an existing JDBC provider. Click next. Provide the database name and the server name as the IP address of the host machine. Select the authentication alias. Click next, click finish, click save to save the changes. So we have successfully created two data sources. It's a no known transactional data source, so we need to do the configuration for that. Click WebSphere application server and click non transactional data source. Click OK, click save to save the changes. Let's do a test connection to test. Click the test connection. The test connection is successful. Let us do the test connection of the trade data source. Click the checkbox and then click the test connection. The test connection is successful. We have successfully created two data sources. Let us create a cluster. Go to server. 
clusters click websphere application server clusters click new provide the cluster name cluster click next so we are going to add the first cluster member by converting an existing server on the node 03 click next the second member is server 2 which will be created on the node 02 click next click finish to complete the cluster creation click save to save the changes now let us create a service integration bus click service integration buses click new enter the name for the bus bus click next click finish to complete the bus creation click save to save the changes click bus click bus members to add a bus member click add click the cluster bus member click next and we'll go with the default policy high availability click next we are going to use the file store so let's configure the file store provide the log directory path and the permanent store directory path click next click next click next click finish to complete the add bus member click save to save the changes we have successfully added the bus member let us create some bus destinations click bus select destinations click new click next provide the queue name trade broker queue click next click next click finish click save to save the changes click new select topic space click next provide the topic space name click next click finish click save to save the changes we have successfully created a queue and a topic space let's add some jms resources click queue connection factories select the scope as cell click new click ok provide the queue connection factory name The queue connection factory name is trade broker QCF, so change it. Select the bus name bus. Click OK. Click save to save the changes. So we have successfully created a queue connection factory. Let's create a topic connection factory. Cell scope new ok enter the topic connection factory name trade stream or TCF select the bus name bus click ok click save to save the changes Topic connection factory has been created. Click queues, select the scope as cell, click new, default messaging provider, click OK, and provide the queue name. The name is trade broker queue. Provide the JNDA name. Select the bus name bus and select the queue name. Trade broker queue, which we created in the service integration bus click OK click save to save the changes now let's create a topic again change the scope to cell click new default messaging provider click OK then provide the topic name trade streamer topic and provide the JNDA name select the bus name bus the topic space trade topic space click ok click save to save the changes click the activation specification 
Select, change the scope to cell. Click new. Default messaging provider, click OK. Enter the activation specification name, Tradebook MDB. Provide the JNDA name. Here the destination type is Q. Provide the destination JNDA name and select the bus name as bus. Click OK. Click Save to save the changes. Let's create another activation specification. Provide the name Trade Streamer MDB and provide the JNDA name. Here the destination type is Topic. Provide the destination JNDA name. Provide the destination JNDA name. Select the bus name, bus. Click OK. Click Save to save the changes. So we have successfully cr created all the resources required by the DrayTrader sample. Click Install to install the DrayTrader sample. Click Choose File and select the DrayTrader EAR file. Click Next. The file is getting uploaded. The application has been successfully uploaded. Click Next. Click Next. Review the map modules. Click Next. Review the map virtual host. Click Next. Click Next. Click Finish to complete the application installation. Click Save. To save the changes, let us stop the deployment manager, docker, exe, dmanager, and the command. The stopping of deployment manager is in progress. Deployment manager has been successfully stopped. Let's start the deployment manager again. The starting of deployment manager is in progress. The deployment manager has been successfully started. Let us log into the admin console. Click login. We have successfully logged into the admin console. Go to WebSphere application server clusters. Select the checkbox and click start to start the cluster. Starting of cluster is in progress. The cluster has been successfully started. So let us see whether the application has been started successfully. The application is started successfully. Let's access the sample. So we are using the port number 9081. So we are accessing the sample running on the first machine. Click configuration, recreate the database. So we have recreated it. So it's giving option to stop and restart the application. We are going to stop the application. The application has been successfully stopped. Let's start the application again. The application is started successfully. Click the repopulate day trader database to populate the database. It has been populated with the data. Let's do some trading. Click the trading and portfolio. Click login. We don't want to save the password. Review the information, click account and review the account information, click portfolio and review the portfolio information log off and log off from the application. Let us try to access the DayTrader sample which is running on the second server. So we have deployed this application on the cluster. So the cluster has two members. This, on the second server, the application is running on port 9082. So the application is running successfully on the second server also. So as part of this demo, so we have first created a IBM WebSphere application server network deployment docker image and using the image we have built the deployment manager node and the application server containers. And then we have created a cluster with two members with one server running on node 02, the other server running on node 03. And then we have successfully deployed the day trader sample on the cluster. And we have accessed the day trader sample which are, which are running on both the servers, server 1 and server 2. Thanks for watching the demo.